I'm Kyle Morley from Execution Style. I got a shop here in Elmer, New Jersey. I tend to paint the basically baggers, soft tails, a few choppers here and there. Uh, it seemed to lean the way of baggers for a while. Uh, lately, I've been doing some helmet work, uh, but it's basically just Harley Davidsons in general. Uh, most of the products I use are uh, uh, quite a bit of FBS tapes, uh, fine line tapes. Um, sometimes I even call myself a taper because I'll tape out a bike for literally a week straight if it's a bigger, you know, touring bike or bagger. Um, and then the paint work is actually the, the least amount of time I, I put into the bike is actually laying the paint down. It's that, you know, I always call that the easy part. Once it's laid out with tape, um, that's the... Basically, the, the paint is the, the part that takes the least amount of time, although it's kind of the fun part. Uh, it's, but as far as tools go, it's just, you know, spray guns, airbrushes, tape, things like that. A little bit of pinstriping. I, I've been, I'm, I'm the type that uh, I'm not a pinstriper by trade, by any means. Um, I do have a, a few guys that have helped me along the way, but I, I try to lay my work out where I don't have to actually put in a lot of pinstriping. Um, it's not my forte, so uh, I, I lean the way of tape, paint, and when you remove the a fine line, it becomes your pinstripes. So both. Um, formerly trained in auto body world, I've been to every PPG class known to man uh, because I worked in a PP, there are three PPG shops, and then I was a Actually, I worked for a jobber for PPG for a few years and we went to, you know, I went through every class that they that they offered a few times, some of them a few times. Um, so as far as that's concerned, I'm formally, you know, professionally trained, but the as far as the artistic side, I'm self-taught for the most part. Hardest to master, well, to jump back to the pinstriping, probably that, because that's, <laughs> that, that, that seems like it's always been a challenge. Leafing has always been a little bit of a challenge, uh, although I have been doing a lot more in the last couple of years. Um, the hardest part really is design, just coming up with something fresh and something new and trying to outdo yourself from the last job. <sighs> best skill set right, that's super hard to say I guess without patting yourself on the back but best skill set I think is is coming up with fresh new three-dimensional uh, designs I, I, I pride myself on that I try to set myself apart from the crowd a little bit in that realm uh, you know some of the some of the stuff that gets popular and people want becomes a little monotonous and it's hard to get around that because when people see one design, they, they want that. Um, and, and you need to almost kind of uh, lead the, or, or try, to, try to lead the customer in a way where you don't just do the same thing over and over because they saw it, they liked it, they want it. You have to kind of lead them to the next new thing and, and try to get their trust and, and put something new into the, you know, the design. Weirdest paint request. That's that's pretty hard. That's pretty hard. Um, I feel like I painted everything from mailboxes to uh, mixers. You know, kitchen mixers for for women and stuff. And it's just I don't. I, it's, it's hard to say what the really weirdest one is. A guy just stopped the other day and and booked a uh, 1940s jukebox. So that's you know just just some just some off the wall stuff, but I don't I don't turn any of them away. Basically, you know if they come here and it's you know it's a job and it looks fun, I'll, I'll you know I'll accept the challenge. Uh, I'm gonna say early on, back in the early 2000s, I was just watching a lot of different videos. You know, back then it was VHS tapes and CDs and one or DVDs or whatever it was. Um, Craig Frazier and, and guys like that, Terry Stevens. Um, early on, I did actually, I, I got into a lot of airbrushing and doing skulls and stuff like that. I don't do barely any of that anymore. Um, it just kind of went that way. Uh, as soon as I found 
the, I guess you want to call it low rider style. As soon as I found that, I gravitated that way. I posted a few things, people wanted it, and it just kind of developed into now that's my thing or my style or whatever you want to call it. I've uh, been painting since 1998, so whatever that is, 20 some years, I guess. Um, de de I grew up in the body shop, working in the body shops, painting, um, uh, I'm going to say on the side from, you know, when I, was, when I was working in the shop, on the side I would do helmets, small stuff, even mailboxes, whatever it was, just to get my hands on it and, and try, try new things. Sometimes it was even just for buddies or whatever it was, just, you know, free to get the practice and, and you know I even did some of the cabinets that are here in the shop still 20 years ago just when I didn't have something to do I would spray some cabinets and give it a shot and that's kind of where you learn what works and what doesn't without uh, you know uh, without messing up on somebody's paying job. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, but back back then, um, I feel like you would you would acquire, you know, your buddy had paint left over from painting his truck. You would use that color, and then you would go buy something, you know, another color, and and it was it was kind of simple back then. And I didn't use any of the real expensive tapes or the I didn't have like really good paint guns. Although I did have decent guns from working in the shop, but I didn't have all the good airbrushes you needed. I didn't have all the striping, uh, you know, brushes and all. But expensive, not really, because you kind of you made it work, you know. And, and a lot of a lot of our buddies around here would always, you know, we would trade back and forth. So oh, you can borrow my gun, or you can come use my booth, or whatever it was. So I wouldn't call it expensive, you know, back then to try it out. Nowadays, yeah, it's a little pricey. I mean, the materials, especially when you know what's right and you know the good stuff, the materials are are up there. But it makes it it makes the job if it's if you're using the right stuff. Uh, every once in a while, I'll have a, a customer that comes with an idea that's, I wouldn't call it classic, but just old or outdated. And I do try to steer them, not, not necessarily steer them away from that, but steer them in a direction of something new or forward thinking. Uh, it just, because at the end of the day, it's, I do want to make the customer happy every time, but I also want to feel like I did something new and, and fresh. So I will kind of aid them in, you know, if, if they hadn't seen the newer trends or um, I, I, and I tell a lot of people this, when I do any and all of my donation work, uh, skate decks for benefits and all that kind of stuff, that's usually when I can throw colors and designs and just weird stuff that a customer wouldn't normally ask for. I do that and then a customer will see that and want it then I can do it on a big project that's a, you know, like a paying job. And I feel like that's, the, 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 that's one of the really nice parts about doing stuff like that. Even if it's like you know, doing a skateboard for a trophy, for a show, um, I just throw, everything at, you know, just throw everything at it that's in my mind. And it, it, we end up being able to use that in the future for a project. I have had a few that just, you know, guys with bikes, they, they get, you know, me included, you just get tired of the bike you have, the paint job you have, the, you know, whatever it may be. Um, I've done, I've built a few of my own bikes over and redone the design of the bike, redone the paint job. Uh, customers have brought me this, the same bikes and just said, you know, I'm tired of this color. I'm tired of this design. I want to freshen it up. I'm completely okay with that. Sometimes it's sad to start sanding down your own paint job. That you you know you like and they liked, but uh, to have it just but but to freshen it up and do something new is I'm always down for that. Uh, my customers, uh, I'm gonna say it's 50-50. Uh, half of them are extremely involved. They know what they want. They we you know, we sit down and we hash it all out and get to the you know what we really want to get out of it. And some of them just have seen the work, my prior work, and just want me to do my thing, which I enjoy that. Uh, a lot of times I will, well, I will have them send me a few pictures of whatever they see out there, my old work, whatever it may be, and just, to, just for me to get in their brain to see what they really like, uh, what their style is. If they just say it out loud, it's hard for me to really dig in and see what they really want. Um, if they just tell me to do anything I want, sometimes it's a little, I don't trust that because at the end of the project, they might not 
really love it and I want them to love it. So, so yeah, I, I usually make them involved even if they, they don't want to be really involved. Inspirations for my paint jobs come from absolutely everywhere, uh, from as far back as 20 some years when I used to look in, you know, tr trucking magazines and lowrider, uh, all the way into, you know, up till now, I'll be walking through a hotel and there'll be a, you know, three dimensional design in the tile work on the floor. And I'll snap a picture of my phone and save it. And, you know, I'll, I'll ba basically vectorize that and just come up with a pattern. That's usually where a lot of that weird, like, 3D stuff I do comes from. Um, but that's, yeah, the, the inspiration comes from absolutely everywhere, not just in the, uh, well, I will say it comes from a lot of other artists around me that I, that I have always looked up to, old and new. Uh, but it, it also comes from outside of the, the you know, the paint world. Uh, that, that's, that goes both ways. I think, um, I, I obviously see things out there that were, I can tell were inspired by something I did. I've done uh, paint projects that were inspired by a different artist and there's a fine line. You don't want to copy anyone, but, uh, everyone gets inspired, you know, just like when you hear a song and you say, wait, that sounds like a, you know, a song I already heard but it's not the exact song. It might be, you know, some similar lyrics or whatever it may be. So there's always going to be that little bit of a mesh, uh, between, uh, between artists and styles. And, uh, but I, I think it's, I think that's actually a good thing because it keeps each, it keeps the whole industry moving forward because everyone's kind of flowing off each other and, and pushing, pushing off each other basically. The paint job horror stories, uh, they come and go. Uh, I, we, we used to always say they come in threes. For some odd reason, uh, you, you would have something that messed up and you know, you're just waiting for that, that second and third one to come. Uh, and then you'll have you know, a year or two will go by and you won't have any you know, big issues. But I don't have a specific horror story. But yeah, I've, I've definitely had my challenges over the years, but I feel like that's 100% if you don't have those, you're, you're, you'll never really learn what, you know, you only learn how to do something if you, you know what not to do or you, or you know what you can get away with just, and custom paint is always pushing that line to where you almost mess up, but you know, I can push it this far and get away with it and it works. So uh, I think the, and them challenges help you along the way. Are you a teacher, whether it be an apprenticeship or uh, teaching at a workshop? I would never call myself a teacher by any stretch, but I have done classes. Uh, I've done the Brushmasters getaway. I've done some when Airbrush Action was still around. I did a handful of classes with them. Um, I did a few with PPG at their training centers. Um, we've been in talks about doing a, a few with uh, with Trollers out in out in LA, but we ha you know I haven't done any. I haven't done any lately because of the pandemic stuff you know we, we've actually talked about doing a few up at in das's place in new jersey because it's close to close to me and they offered the facilities so um yeah I, I actually enjoy that part of it i do i do enjoy um teaching you know not not necessarily teaching but helping the you know the up-and-comers or the hobbyists or you know whoever it may be i like sharing you know my my knowledge that i have and experience Uh, admire as an artist, there's, I, it's, it's not hard at all for me to say who I admire. It's the list is probably too long. That's, that's probably the, the biggest thing. And it's not necessarily all in, in my realm or, or exactly the style I paint. But like I said before, as far as inspiration goes, I take it from everywhere. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, Manny Cincinero, uh, Steve Gibson, Franny Drummond, Freddie Zicoli. Uh, the, the list is literally probably too long to even sit here and say on camera, but everywhere from airbrush to pinstripers, Jim Mache, um, Jonathan Mercado, like it just, it just keeps going and going and going. Um, artists that aren't, you know, they're no longer with us. Danny DeHefe, rest in peace. Um, I've looked up to all these guys for years and years, and even some of them are, fresh on the scene or just started and they're, you know, I look at them and go, I, you know, I can't believe they're coming up with this new fresh idea that it inspires me. So yeah, there's, 
There's, a, there's tons of guys out there, that guys and girls, that I look up to and, and watch what they're doing, and it, it inspires me every day. I'm gonna say that's probably the most challenging part of, of having a you know having a, a paint shop, custom paint shop, whatever you would call it, um, is is you know running social media, running the you know the business side of it, the books, and actually you know doing the artwork, coming up with it, meeting the customers, emailing, responding back and forth, social media. Um, it's a lot to juggle. Uh, I, I I don't mind it. I enjoy it, and I kind of pride myself on staying. Uh, staying up on, you know, responding back and forth and uh, communicating with customers. Um, I, I schedule my shop, uh, from what I've talked to a lot of different artists, I schedule my shop a lot different than a lot of them do. Um, I only have a few projects in here at a time, one or two max. So sometimes you'll walk in my shop and it looks like I don't have anything to do because I have a project or maybe two. I don't, I don't bring a project in until I'm ready to work on it. And it's, so basically I schedule you for June 1st. You know, I'm working on your project when you drop it off or the following. I might even work on that afternoon after you leave, um, which, you know, a lot, of, a lot of shops that I've seen out there, projects will sit around and collect a little dust, the customer gets upset. I try to, I try to make it so that doesn't happen here. And, and that's, sometimes that's a challenge because schedules you know, even like, you know, family, vacations, uh, customers not bringing stuff on time or, you know, whatever it may be is always a challenge, but it's not a challenge I'm, I'm not up for. I, I, I kind of, I like it. I pride myself on uh, being, you know, being a, a stickler about my schedule. And I like that. Social media, to me, it's fun. It's, you know, I don't do it while I'm working. I do tape some stuff, obviously, to have something to post. But uh, a lot of that stuff I'll do, you know, when I'm going to bed, I'm just kind of hanging out and sitting on the couch, whatever. I'll, I'll put some stuff together. I'll post some stuff up. So it's, it's I don't know. I, I don't think it's hard. It's, it, it is challenging, but it's, it's cool. I don't have any specific awards that I've won that I'm really proud of. Uh, anytime I build a bike, which I don't build bikes here for a living, I do it for myself, my friends, family. I built a couple bikes for my dad. Um, when I build bikes, I do use them to show off my work, obviously. Um, but when I do, you know, if I build a bike from scratch from, you know, or, or whatever, it, however I build the bike, I usually take a, a Harley and break it down and, and build it back up my way. When I do get an award for something like that, it's, it's an honor. It's cool because people are recognizing the time and effort I put into it and appreciating, you know, the way it looks, you know, the outcome. Uh, I've won, you know, a handful of awards here and there for my paint work. It's always cool. Uh, having bikes that I've done or projects I've done at SEMA, to me, that's, that's a big honor because growing up, I always looked at SEMA like the, the mecca. And, you know, you, you can't just pull up to SEMA and have a car there, a bike there. Uh, you have to have respect of your peers and even the brands that you, you're using the products. So to have a few bikes there for the last, I'm gonna say six or seven years, it, that, to me, that's a, a huge honor. And I, obviously I only have my, uh, my sponsors and you know, the brands I work with to thank for that. And, but that is a, it's a big honor to, you know, for, to see them appreciate what I do year after year. Uh, the steps to, the steps to anything, and I guess the way the way I approach a paint project is come up with a design first. Fit, you know, as far as you know, color wise, design wise, you know, and and the details, I almost feel like they they fall into place throughout the project. So you can't really get too dialed into the exact details until it get, it gets into it a little ways. I I've been always the type to uh, I clear coat in between uh, colors a lot. Uh, it allows me the chance to experiment as I'm, as I'm painting something. So if I painted something black and I'm going to put white graphics on it, if I paint it black, clear coat it, wet sand it, then I can do whatever I want. And if I don't like it, I can wipe it off. I can sand it off. And, I, and now I still have my base coat that's clear coated and protected. Um, a lot of guys out there don't do it because it's, it's a waste of material. It's a waste of time. I don't see it that way. I see it as it's given me that 
canvas to be able to do whatever I want and not have to worry about be super, super careful. And like, you know, if I mess it up, I got to repaint it black again. You don't have to just wipe it off and start again. So it allows me that little bit of a freedom. Um, but as, as far as the process goes, that's about it. I, you know, I usually clear in between most colors, not every single one. Um, I'll do a lot of my tape out first over top of that initial clear and clear and sand. I'll do a lot of the tape out work um, and not add a lot of tape after so I'll, I'll mask everything i'll have the whole design laid out back masked and i'll spray color peel tape peel tape spray color peel tape so i'm not putting tape back on fresh base coat which always te always tends to you know cause problems so that's the gist of my my process i guess um Having a few different jobs before I was full-time doing full-time custom paint, I, I enjoy the, the freedom of kind of doing what I want. Obviously it's what the customer wants, but a lot of times they have, you know, we have that freedom where they let me do my thing a little bit. Um, you know, when you're working at a body shop, you're fixing cars, you know, you, you know, car comes in, it's a white car with a bent bumper, you fix it, you paint it white and it, you know, it's monotonous. This is every day is something different. I'll paint a helmet today, a bike tomorrow, uh, you know, a door the next day, whatever it is, it's always something uh, off the wall and interesting. So every day it's a, uh, it's a little bit of a challenge, but the freedom is like any, it's, it's like nothing else. You know, uh, even when I worked for the jobber, I loved it as an experience, but I had no artistic outlet unless I came home from that and did something in the shop at night. So being able to, have an artistic outlet every day is, is, is pretty cool. Um, I, I, I enjoy traveling. I love traveling. Um, in the first few years of, of opening the shop, I did travel quite a bit. Um, I've traveled to Vegas to paint a bike. I've traveled to Texas to paint a bike. But when I did that, I always talked that customer or builder into on the next one, let's, let's, let's ship it here. And, uh, I'll say 95 of my, 95% of my work is shipped here. You know, I'm in New Jersey. It's not exactly the custom Mecca of the United States. It's, you know, kind of the middle of nowhere. Um, so, you know, customers will ship me stuff from almost all States really. I mean, anywhere from Washington to Texas, Vegas, the Carolinas, wherever it is, they'll ship the bike here. I'll paint it, package it up, bubble wrap it and ship it back. Um, it's worked, knock on wood, it's worked for the last eight or nine years um, without any hiccups. But I, I have traveled, but, and I will, but I'd rather just do it here because I'm surrounded by everything I have, everything I need. I don't have to package it up and send it out to the shop I'm going to, you know. Ten years from now, I... I Ideally, I'd be just doing exactly what I'm doing. Obviously, new projects, you know, new ideas, things like that. But I, I've built, I've built the, my business and I've built my shop up to. And every day, it's 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 changing a little bit. But I've got it where I really, I'm happy where I'm at. Um, I'm happy with the projects I get, the customers I have. Um, I would say just still, just still doing it, still grinding. Uh, shout outs to certainly to any and all brands that I work with, uh, RTI, Indasa, PPG, Paint Huffer, Metal Flake, uh, Trulers. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting a few. Uh, my wife, my daughter for supporting me every day, uh, letting me do what I do, uh, and understanding the weird, weird stuff that goes on in my brain to make this happen. Uh, you know, working weekends here and there when I have to, traveling, you know, all, all kind of stuff like that. My dad, uh, he still works with me every day, helps me, you know, do all kind of stuff. Um, all my buddies, we're all in the same, a lot of my buddies are all in the same field. Um, I got one guy that comes here and helps me, Sammy, he's, he's a good guy. He's a new, new kid, up and coming. He's, he's grinding. Um, but yeah, just, you know, anybody who, and every, you know, if I didn't mention your name, you know who you are. Uh, you know, I, I get a lot of help. It's not just me. Yes. Uh, yes. It's, I'm a single guy, single shop, single owner, but there's a lot of hands out there helping along the way for sure.
So, uh, you know, the, this one behind me is a panel that me and Steve Gibson did, air, oil, and lead. Um, we do a lot of projects together. We kind of collaborate on a lot of bike projects and stuff like that. Um, this is one we did for Iwata, I'm going to say three or four years ago for SEMA. I believe it was low rider, low rider themed or, you know, I think, I think it's what it was, but, uh, it was the year my brother passed and I did a panel just, I, I threw the low rider, the low rider style paneling in there, but I did the, the pyramid studded belts cause of my punk rock background and my brother being a, obviously a, a rock rocker. Uh, he, that's all he did his whole life was playing bands and he loved it, you know, loved it every day. So we just did, we did a tribute to him and, uh, I thought it was something super cool to do for, for that. It, it meant a lot. Um, Steve always supports me on all that, all projects like that. And, uh, we got to show it to the world, you know what I mean? At SEMA with, you know, thousands and thousands of people and, you know, it still hangs in my shop to this day. That's it, man. Cool.